I've started some work on my sand drawing project again um, and I've done a bit of work on making the mechanism under the tabletop a bit easier to build, a bit more reproducible, a bit cheaper. Um, so this model's all made of uh, laser cut plywood. So it's much faster to iterate on the design and uh, making all the parts is, is, a, lot, is a lot more straightforward. Uh, so all the sprockets are laser cut, there's some steel shafts through there. Um, the stepper motors, um, the stepper motors on the old ones were just ones that I had left over from another project and they had um, sprockets pulleys fitted to the end of the shafts and they weren't adjustable in any way and they were a, kind of a peculiar thing like they came out of an old scanner or fax machine or something um, whereas these ones are a much more uh, well-known part they can just go and buy them off eBay um, and also, likewise with these little GT2 pulleys on the top there, you can just buy the pack of 10 for, for cheap. I think these steppers are about $13 Australian delivered each in a pack of three. don't know why they sold a pack of three. Anyway, um, and these, yeah, these are a pack of 10 for like 10 bucks or something, not very much. Um, but yeah, it's hooked up to my the electronics. Uh, so this is the version one of the electronics board of... Um, unsalted the power supply because it was woefully inadequate, the, the voltage regulator, um, and I've bodged on there a uh, adjustable switch mode supply. Um, and there's also some bodge wire to rearrange some pins and, and such. Version 2 won't take care of all that. Um, but it's working pretty well and it's much simpler to put together. So the old version um, was slightly different, but this one has this stepper here drives the shaft uh, so it's driving this pulley down here and that's pinned to the shaft that passes up through this part which is just full of um, cheap skate bearings uh, so this this arm rotates freely with no engagement on the shaft and then this top pulley is also pinned to the shaft so it passes this this motor power through the shaft up to here and then through this pulley over to this one um, the pulleys are also like a dollar each and then I've made a little um, splitting jig to cut them, uh, make them thinner, because they come 6mm and only 3mm. Um, so you can get double your belts as well. Um, so um, the arm one, which is this one here, is driven just directly off this stepper. That belt drives this pulley, which is glued to that stack of plywood there. Um, so yeah, much easier to put together. I'm not 100% keen on this alternating layer for the, the belt tensioning, so I'll notice all the slots that hold the stepper motors in uh, are slotted. All the holes are slotted, likewise here, uh, because whenever you have a belt, you want to be able to tension it um, to account for slightly different lengths of belts and also get the belt to seat into the teeth properly. You don't want to lose belt. Loose belts are no good. Um, so, yeah, I'm not super duper happy about this tensioning mechanism. I might just stack it up differently such that there's two um, tongues on the inside and then two on the outside as opposed to alternating like that. Um, but it works well enough um, to throw this together. Um, so I've got the, the old seat for the old steppers just in there. It's got, I've got this one of my uh, hot glue sticks it had sparkles in it. And it smells awful for some reason. Um, but um, for now, I've got these DRV8500 or something stepper drivers. Um, I do have some expensive, fancy stepper drivers floating around somewhere. I think they're in a box over there. But they're supposed to be much quieter, because if I put the phone up to the motors... They do make a noise. You can hear them. Um, so the, the fancy ones I've got there have got some sort of fancy... A signal shaping nonsense and them to make the steppers much quieter. You get lower peak torque, but I don't really need torque for this application. Um, so this design, the old one, has got these slotted opto switches to do the homing um, because uh, you need to home the arms before you can get absolute coordinates moving the magnet around. There's no magnet on this one currently, but um, the magnet will attach on the end of there. Um, so yeah, these ones are for oops. These ones are for absolutely for measuring the position of the arms in absolute terms uh, with reference to the bed. Um, but these are a bit of a pain in the butt um, 
So what I'm going to do, I've ordered some Hall effect sensors, uh, analog Hall effect sensors, and I'm going to just stick a magnet to the underside of this arm, and then probably just use the magnets already on this one, and then do a full loop and watch the, the peak of the magnetic flux go up and down, and then the peak of it is going to, I'm going to take that as position zero. Um, that way I can have a nice non-contact um, position sensor for those arms. Because these slot adopter switches are very precise, um, but they're highly sensitive to the position of this. If this moves a little bit, then the, the arms start bonking onto the switches because they, they necessarily have to be quite close to the moving parts. Uh, whereas I think there's a lot more uh, room for error with the uh, Hall effect sensors. Um, the thing after that is new enclosure. This one's just made out of some um, MDF scraps I had laying around. And the actual bed is over here. Um, so I'm going to make it out of um, stacked plywood, um, laser cut, and I'm going to cut like 120 degree arcs and then glue them, stack them up in a nice big circle and then sand and paint it. I reckon that should look really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to let this run overnight, make sure the belts don't slowly work off and uh, see how we go. Okay, bye.